Hello, and welcome to a mini-series podcast on Lincoln Electric Weld School's COVID-19 Readiness and Return to Program podcast. My name is Brian. I'm an engineer here at Lincoln Electric. Joining me today is Adam Webb. How you doing, Adam? Doing good, Brian. Hey, why don't you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, so my name's Adam Webb, and I am the program manager here for Lincoln Electric's Welding Technology and Training Center located in Cleveland, Ohio. All right, sounds good. So tell me a little bit about uh, what's happened over the last couple months here with our school. I mean, we were, we were humming along for a long time. We have a brand new facility here and, and things got shut down pretty quickly here. Yeah, Brian, I, I think this caught a lot of people off guard. Uh, I know it certainly did us here. Uh, you know, Lincoln Electric just built this new 130 plus thousand square foot state of the art welding technology and training center. Uh, you know, we have over 200 welding and cutting stations here. And, uh, you know, we built this huge building that we were, you know, was really built and designed to bring people together and teach them the latest and greatest in welding technologies. And all of a sudden, everything just stopped. And then we had to retool, re-gear, and regroup, and get everything built back with separation in mind for social distancing. Uh, so yeah, we've had some interesting uh, struggles here lately. So as we did come to the end of the quarantine and we were preparing to open back up, what did that look like? What did you have to go through to, to get this place up and running again? You know, wow, uh, what, what, a, what a long, strange trip this has been. Uh, you know, uh, this has been about a, a four-week process uh, just for me to be able to get people back in, in the doors of this facility. Um, you know, I had some really great resources for information here uh, with our local EHS groups that were, you know, keeping the main plant up and running throughout the whole process. So. So they were definitely a great source of information. Uh, also, uh, the Ohio.gov website, uh, they just have, have a, a lot of really good information on there. Uh, the Ohio Stay at Home order documents were all on there uh, that were updated by the Ohio Department of Health that, that basically has all the guidelines that you know businesses uh, need to follow in order to be open and it had the dates of, of when certain businesses were allowed to, to open their doors again and uh, so, so there's a lot of great information for schools and companies if they just go to their their local government websites and check that out uh, the cdc uh, has, a, has a good website with a lot of information on it as well right i mean myself preparing up to going home for two and a half months I mean, I, we were pretty heavily relying on the daily governor's briefing. I mean, Governor mm -hmm. DeWine came on, I believe, every day at around 2 p.m., and the situation was very fluid at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I mean, things are still changing. Uh, and, and we would get on there and uh, while we were getting the, the facility back up and running, and we'd run upstairs at, you know, 2 o'clock and, and, and try, try to catch his, his updates. and. You know, one day uh, face coverings were mandatory. Another day, you know, we, we didn't have to wear them. And another day you had to wear them again. And, uh, you know, this, this whole thing has really taught me to, to work on my patients a lot. <laughs> right. So, uh, and, and you just have to adapt. Uh, you just have to be willing to change and, and do what's required to, to get back to business. Mm -hmm. So as I walk around the school here today, I mean, we're maintaining social distance. We have a lot of sanitizer around. How did you figure out where those things needed to be? Where did those arrows need to go? How did you figure out how far apart people needed to go? Were you able to reference the governor's website there too? Yeah, you, you know, and uh, th that's gonna be something that's really gonna catch people off guard is the time that it takes to get a facility up and running. Uh, I had, uh, whenever we started bringing people back in the building to, to get the facility ready. Uh, we had like 12 people in here for eight hours a day for a full week uh, just to get markings on the floors and get signs put up and uh, 
you know, we had inner doors and exit only doors and up staircases and down staircases. And, uh, you know, we, we really worked on the, the flow of people, of how to get people from one, one side of the building to the other with maximum social distancing. So, so we had our tape measures out and, uh, I'm telling you six foot that, that takes up a lot of space, right? Uh, People are going to be shocked too when, when they figure out how big a six foot circle really is to, to try to maintain that six foot social distancing. Mm -hmm. We have a hundred and thirty plus thousand square foot facility here and man it was huge before. We get a lot of people in this place and it really cut our numbers down. Yeah. And, uh, scheduling has has been an issue. Uh, you know we're trying to schedule start times when students are coming in the building uh, have separate start times for employees coming in uh, so we don't get too many people coming through the door at a certain time right our lunches our breaks are scheduled at different times to to allow people to flow up and down the hallways without bumping into each other uh, so, so it's definitely a lot of time yeah I find myself I've been coming in and out of this building now for two, two and a half years, and I find myself always going up and down the same staircase, and it's just out of habit, <laughs> and almost, it's just muscle memory. Yeah. So I find myself wanting to go down the staircase that's designated as up. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, a lot of these places weren't built with that in mind. Right. You know, this facility was meant to bring the world together to learn welding here at this facility. Built on community. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, we're, we're keeping everybody separated. Right. So it's a big change. It really is. So, and some of these older facilities, you know, uh, you know, they're narrower hallways and they're narrow staircases and... Definitely very confined, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. So we hear a lot in the news and in the governor's briefings about the shortage of supplies all around yeah. America, all around the world. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you were seeing a shortage in materials when you were trying to buy things to get the school up and running again? Ab absolutely. It's, uh, it, it's going to be interesting when uh, all the schools come back online at this, about the same time in the fall. Hopefully everything gets started back in the fall on time. Uh, with all the businesses coming back online, you know, the barber shops and stuff like that are, are coming back here soon. And, you know, everybody's going to be looking for those supplies at the same time. Right. I mean, I had to get, you know, 15 to 18 one gallon jugs of hand sanitizer and put them by every entrance and exit door in here. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just really tough to find the supplies to, to keep open even sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, even those little stickers on the floor, the little round circles that say, uh, you know, keep your six foot social distancing. Try to find those right now. It's almost like 15, 20 days to, to get those delivered to you now. Yeah. I've noticed that uh, maybe some alcohol or bourbon distilleries are making <laughs> hand sanitizer now. Yeah. Yeah. Agave hand sanitizers are going to be the new thing, huh? <laughs> So what do you think was the biggest hurdle that Lincoln Electric uh, Welding Training Center had to overcome when they started back up this week? You know, it's, it's the space has, has really been challenging. The scheduling has been challenging. Getting people moved around. Um, scheduling. But, uh, you know, the, the students, uh, whenever we started back, one of the things we did is we called every student whenever they were... Uh, Okay. We were talking to them about coming back and, you know, we were explaining to them what it was going to look like when they walked in and, you know, they were going to have to wear face coverings and we were going to be taking temperatures. Uh, we were really trying to express to them, uh, you know, what our expectations were going to be of them when they came in the building and what they could expect to see. Uh, so we really tried to, to communicate well with them. And, you know, everybody just had really positive feedback and they were really wanting to come back and they, they were ready to get their training started again and, and to get finished up with it. Uh, so so we've, we've had a really good experience with the students and the staff. Everybody was really ready to, to start back. Yeah, I feel the same way. 
So when we were all sent home, uh, the instructors went home, they were working on curriculum, or Lincoln Electric was able to keep them employed over in the factory. When it was time to bring the instructors back, what were some of the challenges that they had getting back into the swing of things? Did they have to redefine their curriculum in any way? What, what kind of challenges did they have? You know, uh, one of the biggest challenges, again, is, you know, um, just getting used to the face masks and the environment. Um, it, it's tough to get up and teach a class uh, and give, you know, a 45-minute to an hour lecture with a face covering on. Yeah. Uh, that's been challenging for them. Uh, they're out in the welding booths, you know, and they have their face coverings on, and it gets hot. Uh, so uh, we're, we're dealing with that right now, so we're, we're looking at some different options to, to try to help that out. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to hear people uh, whenever their, their face is covered and they're trying to talk to you and explain something, or when the students are trying to express why they're, why they're having issues. and. Um, so, so, so the face coverings have, have been a little bit of an issue, but uh, we're, we're working through some of those things. Yeah. Are we offering free facial coverings to our students? Are we recommending they bring their own? We are supplying them if, if the students do need them. Uh, but really, I think everybody's just kind of using it right now as, as a way to express themselves. I mean, yeah, I uh, noticed that. <laughs> you know, everybody's coming in with the, their, their unique bandanas or... You know, they're, they're, they're kind of making their own face coverings right now, so, so that's been pretty interesting to, to see what people are wearing. Yeah. My wife's a nurse here at the Cleveland Clinic downtown, and uh, sh she's telling me about the facial coverings that they have to wear, and their guidance is that if you're bringing a facial covering in from home, you have to make sure you clean it every day. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, 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 that, and that's a good point. Uh, you know, some of the guys are wearing bandanas, and, and some are... Uh, you know, wearing the ones that they uh, that they personally make, but yeah, you, you definitely have to wash these things. And uh, I, I can't imagine wearing one of these more than one day without washing it, anyways. You know, it's <laughs> right. So as you opened up uh, on Monday, what was the biggest surprise that maybe caught you off guard? What what maybe weren't you as prepared for as you wanted to be? You, you know, really. Um, Wow, that, that, that's a good question. Um, we really did, did a, the, the team did a really great job getting the building up and, and ready to go for this. Uh, so, you know, we were able to get everybody through the doors really quick and, and, and got everybody up and going. But, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the flow of people. We're, we're going to make some adjustments in that coming up. So, so we're, we're going to make some scheduling changes and, and things like that to kind of try to handle that a little bit better. But... Uh, just scheduling, uh, the space in the building just isn't there anymore. I mean, with the, with the social distancing, it's, the space isn't there. So, so we got we got some of those challenges that we're dealing with, but we're we're going to work through them. I think we got some creative things that we're going to be doing in the in in the next couple of weeks here um, that, that may help us out a little bit, and and we'll share those with everybody later on as as, as we start trying some different things to. Uh, to reach out to the local instructors and trainers and try to share with the world what, what we're learning here. Yeah, I noticed when I came back this week that it almost looked different when I walked in. Oh yeah. I mean, the attention to detail that went into all of the signage that we've put mm -hmm. up, the flow of people walking down the hallways, I mean, that was, it couldn't have been easy to think no. through those things. No, and like I said, it was a week-long process with you know our whole team up here doing it. And we'd put something down, and, and we'd try it, and we'd get everybody, and we'd walk up and down the hallways, and, you know, does it have a good flow to it? Or are we keeping people in the right direction? And, you know, it's one of those things where, hey, everything looked great on paper, and, and then when we put it down, it, 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 it didn't work out right, some of the things we were trying. Yeah. And, you know, some of the things worked out better than I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that nobody would pay attention to the little arrows on the floors. I, I was wrong. <laughs> I, I mean, it's amazing. You put an arrow on the floor and somebody's going to follow that thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try that at home with my kids now, see, see if they'll listen to that. But 
It's like uh, the quarter of the, <laughs> the cart at Aldi. Yeah. It's yep. amazing how many people bring the cart back for a quarter. Yeah, ex exactly. So uh, the arrows on the floor worked out really well. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, people will just get in line with that and just follow it, buddy. So right. we, we had pretty good luck with that. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited to kind of share with everybody some of the stuff we're doing here. So, and, and we got some neat things that we're going to try a little later on, also. So, we'll, yeah. we'll be sharing some of that later on. Well, I appreciate you sitting down and uh, giving us the time today, Adam. Yeah, no problem, Brian. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get back together and uh, we'll share a little bit more detail about uh, some of the signage and uh, some of the things that we're finding out here. Right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on. Uh, this first episode of a mini series about how we are opening back up our training center here in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, be sure to check it out on our website. We're going to be coming out with a, a webinar series as well. Um, and reach out to Lincoln Electric Education if you have any questions.